Some 14 years ago, I stood watching my university students file into the classroom for the opening session in my Theology of Faith class. That was the first day I saw Tommy. He was an average enough looking kid, but at that time, I was unprepared for Tommy. Tommy turned out to be the atheist in residence in my course. He constantly objected to or smirked at the possibility of an unconditionally loving God. We lived in relative peace for one semester, although at times he was a pain in the back row. At the end of the course, when he turned in his final exam, he asked in a slightly cynical tone, Do you think I'll ever find God? I decided on a little shock therapy. No. Oh, I thought that was the product you were pushing for. Tommy, wait. I don't think you will find God, but I know and I'm certain that God will find you. Later, I heard that Tom had graduated and I was duly grateful. Then came a sad report. Tommy had terminal cancer. Before I could search him out, he came to see me. Come in. When he walked into my office, he frankly looked like a mess. But his eyes were bright and his voice was firm for the first time in a long time. I have cancer. Wow. Can you tell me about it? Um, sure. What would you like to know? I mean, what's it like to be 24 and know you have like a terminal illness? Well, it could be worse. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's like being 50 and having no morals or values. Or like being 50 and thinking that booze or seducing women or even making money are the biggies in life. But what I really came here to talk to you about is what I asked you that one day. I asked you if you ever thought I would ever, you know, be able to find God. And you said no, which surprised me. Then he said, he will find you. I thought that about that a lot, even though my search was hardly intense. But when the doctors removed the lump and they told me it was malignant, um, I really began, I really began banging against the doors of heaven, but nothing happened. Well, one day I just woke up and I gave up and I quit. I gave up on God, I gave up, I just didn't believe in the afterlife, and nothing else mattered to me anymore. I decided to spend more time to set my priorities straight. I thought about one of your lectures, you know, um, the essential sadness is to go through life without loving, but um, it would really be equally sad to leave this world, you know, without telling those you love that you have loved them. So I began with the hardest one, my dad. Dad, can I talk to you? Go ahead, talk. I mean, it's really important, Dad. What is it? I love you, Dad. I just want to let you know it. Hold on a second, time. Then my father did two things I couldn't remember him doing before. He cried and he hugged me. It was easier with my mom and my little brother. We cried, we hugged each other. We shared things that had been secret for so many years. And one day, I turned around. God was there. He didn't come to me when I was pleading with him. But I guess God does his own things on his own time. But the important thing is that you are right. He found me even after I stopped looking for him. Tommy, you're really making a good, solid point. You're really saying that God showed you his love through loving other people and by accepting that love from them. Yeah, can you do me a favor? 
Can you share with my Theology of Faith class about exactly what you just told me? Sure. Though we scheduled a date, he never made it. Of course his life was not really ended by his death, it was only changed. He found a life far more beautiful than the eye of man has ever seen or the mind of man has ever imagined. Before Tom died, we talked one Hello. last time. Hi. Oh, Tommy, hi. I'm not going to make it to your class. Oh, okay. Will you tell them for me? Will you tell the whole world for me? I'll tell them, Tom. I'll tell them.